Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So, it's one of my neighbor's birthday or something. Um, and they're having like a party and they are so loud. So you guys might hear them laughing and screaming and singing happy birthday and playing music. If I was a Yelper, I would give my neighbors one star for making way too much noise. Um, but this is going to be a Sunday chat. We haven't had a Sunday chat in a while. Y'all hear him? Y'all hear him? Niggas. Niggas. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be a Sunday chat. We haven't had one in a while. This was going to be about Lemonade by Beyonce, which came out last night, Saturday night. And everyone's talking about Lemonade, Lemonade, Lemonade. And a lot of people ask me what I think. I really wasn't planning on making a video. I'm not going to make like a real like video video, like something I would normally do. I kind of feel like I'm not equipped to make a video on Lemonade, which I know is like, what? But um, like I've been reading a lot of like tweets and like Twitter theories and like articles and like a lot of think pieces. And there's some really good discussion and dialogues and breakdowns and unpacking of the images going on so I will have lots of links in the description box for you guys to read um but Lemonade just made me feel very sad <laughs> Lemonade just made me feel sad like and I watched it twice now so I watched it last night and I watched it again earlier today Sunday I actually just finished watching it for the second time and I just felt very sad watching it um I don't know about like unpacking the issues and stuff because watching it just made me feel sad like man Beyonce's really sad <laughs> like she's sad um you know people are like oh I love this you know as a reflection on black womanhood and I feel so empowered and I'm just like, this was really sad, and I feel sad. I don't know if I feel empowered. Like, I'm not really feeling that. I don't think I feel strong or empowered. I asked my mom, like, how did she feel about it? And she was like, I want to sigh and then fuck somebody up at the end. You know, I asked um, one of my best friends, how does she feel about it? And she's like, I mean, I loved it. And she's a big Beyonce fan. You guys know I've been hard on Beyonce in the past. Um, so that's my friend who's like a big Beyonce fan. She's like, you know, I loved it. I thought it was great, but it made me also, you know, very, very sad. Um, you know, people are saying like it pumped them up and they loved it and it made them feel so happy and strong and empowered. And I'm like, you know, what pumped you up and made you feel empowered? Like, I really want to know. So like anyone that felt that way, please let me know, like in the comment section, like I said, I'm doing a lot of reading of think pieces and stuff like that. Like, please let me know. Cause I just felt really sad. Um, and we were talking about it on Twitter and somebody said to me, you know, this album is really sad. The, re it, it, the relationship seems like it's difficult and deteriorating once it was beautiful, but she cares and is hurt. That's what someone tweeted me. And I felt like that was how I felt watching it. You know, like this is stunning visually. It's absolutely beautiful to look at. The same way I felt about the visuals in Formation, which I definitely didn't get the same feeling watching Lemonade that I got watching Formation. Because as you guys know, I fucking loved Formation. I watched Formation like 20 times in a row. Because Formation was like a real straight up like black power ass anthem, song, and video and Lemonade definitely wasn't that, which is fine. I wasn't necessarily expecting Lemonade to be that. I wasn't really expecting it to be anything. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as sad as it was. Um, again, like I thought it was really, really visually stunning, stunning, amazing imagery. It was beautiful to look at. I loved the visual themes. Um, I thought the meditations on the strength of black woman was really interesting, but I kind of feel like a lot of people wa are watching Lemonade with this, like, kind of a curious detachment. Like, Beyonce's a real, I feel like, this is how I feel. Like, Beyonce's a real person. And I kind of feel like this is, you know, this is talking about a real relationship and her real feelings. And I feel for her. Not to say that, like, other people don't. But I just feel sad. Like, man, this sucks. You know, I don't know. Um, so I want to read you guys another Twitter conversation. Somebody said, 
Uh, Beyonce seems very angry, sorrowful, and somber throughout most of it. I think people are simply viewing it as an artistic expression rather than personal. You know, again, kind of like with this detachment. Um, and mm, this person replied, is it personal or artistic? It's probably both, which I agree. A lot of people seem to be looking at it as just art, and I kind of feel like I'm looking at it as something more personal, more deeply personal. So it's sad for me to watch it. Um, and from what I've seen, it seems like the internet has is really loving it and embracing it as this reflection on black womanhood. But I also read something really interesting that said that this was about the stages of grief after a betrayal and finding the inner strength to heal and move forward in a relationship. And that is definitely something that stood out to me. I felt like I was watching someone grieving, you know, um, and then definitely finding the inner strength to like push past that grief. And Beyonce clearly ties her inner strength to being a black woman. So to see the the connection being made between her relationship and, and black girl power and strength was an interesting connection. Um, but I definitely th thought that Lemonade had kind of two main themes. It was like two parts to Lemonade. Um, it was like two works in one. It was definitely a very intimate, you know, kind of love letter and conversation to and with black women and also a, a love letter and a conversation to her husband and her marriage. And I felt like, you know, there were two very separate narratives. So you had the first half that was mostly this sadness and this anger. And then the second half that was pulling on this reserve of strength and, you know, kind of pondering on where that strength comes from as a black woman. And it seems like mo for most people, the second half resonated more forcefully with them. But for me, the first half resonated more forcefully, the sadness and that emotion and, you know, this idea of this being, you know, a visual movement through the five stages of grief you know, during kind of the death and rebirth of her marriage. Um, and that's really what stood out to me. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get over, <laughs> you know. Um, one criticism that I will make is that I personally feel that the visuals were much stronger than the music. I kind of wished it was a narrative film because I loved the parts um with the voiceover, with the poetry by Warsan Shire. I loved that. I loved um, the sound and the sound mixing. Um, not the actual music clips, but just like the sound. Um, the music didn't do it for me as much as the visuals. And there were times where I didn't feel like the music seamlessly fit with what was going on. Like there were definitely times where I felt like they pushed the music in there. Like we can't forget that this is a visual album, you know, like we got beat over the head with the music a little bit. I kind of wish that it had been a narrative short film with just the voiceovers. Um, Cause the narration, her narration was great. Like the audio was great. The sound selection, the sound mixing was great. The sounds of like the thunderstorms and you know, the nature sounds and uh, all that stuff was great. Um, songs that I did like, I don't know the names of the songs, sorry. Well, I know the name of one, Sandcastles, which I did like, which came across to me as like Resentment Part 2. And I like Resentment a lot. Um, Sandcastles I liked, but it was so sad. <laughs> so sad. Um, the Yellow Dress song, Hold Up, I think. I liked that one. That was one where the music and the visuals matched up perfectly. Um, the middle finger on the bus song I liked a lot with Serena Williams perfect that was one where the music and the visuals lined up perfectly um I did not like Freedom the one with Kendrick Lamar I did not like that song I loved the visuals but I didn't really care for the song I felt like again I was getting hit over the head with the music um it was just I don't know because it's like a loud song and it's kind of a more quiet film movie album um so it was a little jarring for me like there were parts where the transitions were a little jarring for me personally um but like the early the again the kind of the first half 
with her, the intuition and the, you know, um, the anger and the apathy. It was like intuition, denial, like anger, apathy. That whole, I, I really like loved that. I thought it was great. Um, very sad, but good, you know? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it was interesting. I, I thought it was interesting. I will say that I thought Lemonade was really, really interesting. I think it's the most interesting that Beyonce's been in a very long time. As you guys know, I'm like a Destiny's Child stan. I'm like a super DC stan. And I liked Destiny's Child. Um, Destiny's Child. I liked Beyonce when she was in Destiny's Child. I really enjoyed her first two albums, Dangerously in Love and B-Day. And then I kind of felt like she checked out. Like, she checked out mentally and creatively, in my opinion, after B-Day. Like, as a huge Destiny's Child fan that also really enjoyed her first two albums, I feel like a lot of her music pre-I um, Am Sasha Fierce was much more interesting, was more mature, had more creative depth. And then I think she went in a certain direction. Like, the whole perfectionist robot thing. That was great for her career trajectory. You know, as it elevated her to this, like, superstar status. But I don't necessarily think that it was best for her as an artist. I feel like she played it safe for a really long time. And safety doesn't always make the best art. So it's kind of exhilarating to see her get away from that. But it's also painful. <laughs> like, it's extremely painful for me to watch. Because I'm a really empathetic person. And she's clearly someone that's coming to some heavy realizations about herself, herself as a woman, herself as a person in a relationship, herself as an artist, you know, she's coming to a lot of realizations and it's making for some great art, but it's really literally like you're witnessing someone grieving and mourning and you're witnessing someone's pain, you know? Um, I was talking with one of my friends on Twitter about it and he said, you know, um, as a creative, Solo ex machina, who you probably have all seen. He was like, as a creative, I do know when people are holding back. I've honestly been waiting for this Beyonce since after B-Day. And I said, like, I agree. This is damn near a creative follow-up to Me, Myself, and I, which came out in 2003. For anyone that doesn't know, Me, Myself, and I was on her very first album, Dangerously in Love. And it's probably my number one favorite solo Beyonce song and video. It's about cheating, a cheating-ass nigga. And the whole video runs in reverse so it starts at the end where her leaving him and then it literally like rewinds back to the beginning so you see what happened and it was really really interesting and kind of avant-garde and extremely creative and lemonade to me feels like a direct follow-up almost like now again me myself and I came out in 2003 and we are now in 2016 so it's like, where was this Beyonce for the last 13 years? Like, where did she go? Like, she disappeared, you know? Um, so my friend Solo wrote me back, like, I haven't cared for much of it after B-Day, but I greatly enjoyed the snippets of what I was hearing today. I will say I enjoyed some things on her last self-titled album. I def saw the spark coming back there. And I agree. I felt like Dangerously in Love and B-Day, Beyonce had that spark, that creative spark. And then, again, I kind of feel like, she checked out and kind of gave a little bit more of the creative control over to other people and to a team who who obviously steered her. I'm not going to say they steered her wrong, you know, because they steered her to this like superstardom, but I feel like they played it very safe. And even Beyonce herself was like, I'm getting bored. All this shit is boring. Everything is boring. And now it seems like she's taken some of that creative control back and she's making art again which I'm enjoying. I think it's really, really interesting. I think she's making a lot of really interesting statements. But it's so sad. It's so sad, guys. It's so sad. Um, I, I just, for me, the anger and the sadness of the first half of Lemonade kind of overshadowed the second half, which was, I guess, you know, again, supposed to be about like redemption and forgiveness and, you know, healing and finding this strength as a black woman and black empowerment. I kind of feel like that was that half was a little bit weaker than the first half. And the message wasn't as strong to me. Um, like there was just a bit of a disconnect between the personal story of her deteriorating marriage and the empowerment of black women. 
like for me the stronger message was someone really really hurting and having this intense experience and there's nothing wrong with that again I thought it was great great art like but I kind of feel like Beyonce really wanted to say like listen I've been trying to be this perfect person for Jay for the media for my fucking fans for all y'all niggas for the last 10 years as a wife and an artist and y'all keep shitting all over me because all y'all niggas want to do shit all over black women and it was just like so much of that in one piece and an hour really wasn't like I kind of wish it had been like a, a two-part thing so maybe like the fr like a literal two-part like so maybe the first hour was would be dedicated to like you know like her going through the the first stages of her grief and the anger and the sadness and then having another full hour devoted to finding forgiveness and healing and finding this strength as a black woman and black empower black woman empowerment you know like I wish we, it, there was a lot there <laughs> I wish there had been more time to delve more deeply into all of it because I feel like the first half overshadowed the second half for me um but I liked it I just was like man that was a lot and what are we supposed to walk away feeling what are we supposed to walk away feeling from this you know like what are we what are we supposed to walk away with you know so I've just been reading a lot about what people are walking away with from it. Um, and yeah, I, I thought it was super interesting, though. I like to see how interesting she she's she's much more interesting now than she's been in the last 10 years for me, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I would love for Beyonce to just say like fuck everything and like disappear for a while and record like a stripped down like acoustic album like just her and the piano and the guitar and I think that'd be dope and I feel like this album and I've been saying that for a long time and I feel like this album is like the closest we've gotten to that um so yeah I don't know I'm not the best one to talk about lemonade I will include some links to some articles that I like and some Twitter feeds that I like in the description box. And please let me know what you guys think in the comment section and how it came across to you because I'm really interested in your opinions. So I know this is probably like shitty, shitty analysis, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think I'm the best person to talk about Lemonade, but I know you guys are going to want to know what I think. So um, let me know what you guys think. Um, food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Sunday chat. Haven't had one of these in a while. Peace.